everyone plays the game a little differently. Um, I've settled in on this 100% mode, and um, it, it's not too bad. It's not, uh, you know, like the uh, totally modded out version of, uh, you know, the sil old Silent Hunter game that I used to play where you have to do everything manually. It's got some nice little shortcuts related to, uh, you know, you dip down, you get a hydrophone contact, and you have these little buttons you can click on, and you can kind of it's kind of like a, a, a self-controlled uh, reveal of information. And if I choose to, I can, you know, all I, if I want to, I can just mouse over the, the, uh, the contact info over here and just see, oh, it's a bearing, you know, 273 or, or 270 or whatever. And I can go ahead and plot a bearing line and do a, do a four bearing method or, or some other target motion analysis that I want to, want to try out. Um, but I like, uh, you know, I, I like the convenience of, you know, then showing the, the contact over here and it, it gives you that nice little intercept. And I do like, as you can tell, I, I draw a lot on the map um, as part of my uh, strategic planning. And, you know, I, this, uh, you know, I wanted to do a little, a little bit more expand on the idea of the strategic game. Because I, I think a lot of people focus on the tactical and I, I think maybe, and you know, I'm not, again, not suggesting anybody's play style is wrong, but um, for me, I, I kind of find it fun. I kind of think there, there's two elements to play. There's a, there's a strategic level where it's, can I intercept um, a, a given contact? And then there's the tactical, which is now you've, you've made it into range and you, you execute the attack and you sink the ship. <clears throat> but sometimes I... I find myself, uh, I get these little one-off missions, and one time, and you know, I probably am not even going to go into the sub, I could just sit here at the map and explain to you what happened, but, you know, my little Type 2 boat's out here in the, in the, well, Celtic Sea, Celtic Sea, uh, south of Ireland, and one time, I was coming through the English Channel, and I got maybe to about right here, so we'll put a little, a little marker, you know. There, there I was, and BDU decides to give me, decides to let me know by, by radio um, that there was a, you know, they did one of these needle in the haystack missions. And if you haven't seen one of those before, it's like, hey, there's this convoy, there's a ship inside of it, and it's transporting some important cargo, and it's going from port X to port Y, and we need you to go in there and sink that one ship. And I was like, okay, cool. Well, I'm here, and then where's the ship, and where's it going? And the message said, eh, it's going from Liverpool to Lisbon. Okay, well, let me see where that is. So you come up here, and you look at England, and uh, I end up finding out, oh, well, there, there's Liverpool. And Lisbon's somewhere in Spain. Where is that? Is that over? Oh, that's Captain, France. We've risen to the surface. It's uh, Lisbon. It's going all the way down there. Well, that's interesting. So it's going from here down to here, and I'm here. So now I was in a little bit of a dilemma. You know, I've, I've shown you before, and they, they told me that it was moving at, they actually told me the speed. They said it was seven knots, or, or it might, might have said slow. So there's no question. Um, if I'm south of Liverpool, I should be able to intercept that ship, providing I don't get hung up along the way. And I've showed you how to do intercepts, but this is this is kind of kind of interesting. If I if I start to you know do some sort of an assumption where oh this one's moving in this direction at, at seven, and I come up with an intercept angle, I obviously I can't can't go across land. So so what do you do? And in my um, my vector intercept video, and if you'd like to go watch that one, I go into detail on how you do these vectored intercepts. Um, I alluded to this idea of dead reckoning, but I didn't. I didn't really show um, show you what the, you know in in what sense you could use it. And um, I also talked about uh, maneuvering boards and how they're used for solving relative motion problems. And when it comes to marine navigation and maneuvering boards. Um, 
as a ship moving inside of a convoy or you're in a you know you're in a a naval um, you know a group of naval ships you know the the admiral or the leader of the of the group may order you to take up a new station and you can use a maneuvering board to figure out okay if my ship is moving you know if i'm in a if i'm moving along in a group and you know i'm at this station and then the admiral says well i want you to take up a new station being you know you know bearing you know 300 off of uh you know off of our our uh i guess that would be port port bow so i want you to go from your position over to this position so then you would go to a maneuvering board whoops to figure out well what what course given given the speed of the convoy what course would i need to take in order to get to that spot and that whole idea you know again it's all it's all fascinating stuff and and uh, in your your free time if you want to to learn about relative motion and maneuvering boards you can um, you can check that out but um, this idea uh, of stationing when we do these these vectored intercepts if i wanted to i could i don't necessarily have to do it um, from my ship i could do it from a different location so i could station my ship in a different position maybe move it out to here and then figure out an intercept course um, but then the question becomes well how am i going to how am i going to track the the course of this ship i know it's going from liverpool down to all the way down to Lisbon. Um, where is it going to be when I'm I'm going to be in a position where I could intercept it? And that's where the the idea of uh, or the the dead reckoning comes in. We're going to make assumptions about the speed of my ship. I'm going to move at flank, so I'm back. You know, I'm in my 2D. I can do 13 knots. And the target is moving slow or around seven knots. So we're gonna assume slow seven knots. And then if I know where their destination is, me, I can use my captain intuition to figure out, well, where, where might that ship go? So it might take a path you know, here and then maybe down to here, here and here. And that seems obvious, um, right? And then what what you might do is you might say, oh, well, I'm just going to go out here and then I'm going to trace that path backwards. But is there anything that I can do given that I know the speed of this ship and I know how fast my ship can go? Is there anything that I could do to get a better approximation of where along this path that ship might be by the time I get into this location? And what I would, the idea here that I, I'd like to, you know, present, I think if you've played, um, if you played any tactical games where you have uh, like a, a turn-based tactical game and you have movement points to spend, um, you've got some, you know, some of your characters have, uh, you know, higher speed, some are lower speed and you, you you have the ability within your one turn to move maybe 10 spaces with your player and you're attacking an opponent who can only maybe move five spaces with his slower player. That's kind of where we are here. I've got a, a ship where it's, its max vector could be a 7 and my max vector could be a 13. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I'm going to use kilometers again as a proxy. I'm going to say, okay. I'm going to assume that for every, and I, a factor of 10, 10 makes this easy. I'm going to assume that for every 70 meters, 70 kilometers, sorry, that this ship can move, I can move 130. So we're going to sit here and trade off and spend movement points. And we'll do 130. So that's where I think I'm going to be. That's where I think that ship's going to be. And I'll do it another 70. Oh gosh, it gets hard to hard to see 
Devs, this is irritating when, uh... It'd be nice if when you, when you initiate the, you know, if the devs are watching, when you initiate this draw activity like this, it'd be nice if that, that stupid icon disappeared. Because I find that it's always blocking me, and then you click, and then maybe the icon comes back. Um, but there's the, there's this, uh, the, it's next move. Whoops, I'm messing around with my sub. We don't need you over there. So they, they've taken two moves. I'll take two moves. Let's see. So we'll put me at another 130. And then they can do another 70. And maybe they're out to here. And I'll start to turn the corner. And I don't necessarily need to, um, you know, if I... If it didn't make sense that, uh, you know, that... I'd be all the way out there in the middle. I think that that's fine, but if I wanted to, I could take two moves and just divide the 30 by two, right? Just do uh, you know 65 and then maybe another 65. That would be equivalent, but I'm just gonna go, go out there for 130. And then this one's gonna come down. He's gonna take another move. He's maybe gonna be around, around here. And I'm gonna move over this way and just to make it interesting I'll, I'll take myself up there a little bit and the ship keeps coming down and now it's 70 again and now finally I'm within 130 I'm within my move uh, parameter so that means Somewhere in here, I can intercept that ship. So if I want to figure out the, the intercept angle, we would go to, you know, within this, if I know the ship is here. And again, you can watch my, my vector, uh, vector intercepts if, uh, so I know it's, whoops, that's not the right one we need. Uh, my vector intercept video go, goes over this in, in more detail. So I'm going to say it has a, a vector of 7 in that direction. And I know that my speed is 13. Then what I do is I draw a bearing to target which is right there and we look at the angle so it's target out to my radial vector back to the ship's radial vector and it says 11.6 so maybe maybe 12 11.6 12 So that means if I come here and I transfer that 11.6, that is the course that I would take. And right there, is where I'd predict that I would intercept. So I just wanted to share with you this, uh, you know, sometimes you get these, these missions and you're stuck behind, you know, you're over here on the other side of Ireland and you've got a ship over that's leaving a port over here. And to me, this is a, a lot of fun, a strategic thing. You know, it's like I, I plan all this out and then I have my, you know, I set my ship up so that it follows this exact course. And then maybe I get to, you know, maybe within 20 kilometers or 50 kilometers of the intercept and I dip down and take a hydrophone check and see if I can pick up the contact. And if I pick up the contact, you know, it's, it's to me, that's like sinking a ship. I was like, oh, wow, that was really cool. I was able to, I was able to make, you know, do that, uh, you know, that dead reckoning and this, this interesting little strategic exercise and, uh, I had success in finding the ship, and uh, you know, to me, it just adds another uh, another element of fun 
to the gameplay and, and it also you know I, I like to role play a little bit and i'm thinking you know if uh if bdu is calling me and giving me this order it must be pretty important so i i try to you know try to adhere to it but anyway i wanted to show you that uh, that concept and uh you know let me know what you think uh, and, and you know what what thoughts you have on uh on this idea of uh you know strategic navigation and and maybe some tricks that you use but uh, thanks for watching